AI exploded in popularity, especially with the introduction of something called Chat GPT. So we've got some media expert Mohit. Mohit Rajan is back on the show with us to discuss the sudden interest in this. Great to have you, Mohit. Um, first off, it, can we get something easier to say? <laughs> I have such a hard time saying it. I, I, I totally understand. Here's an indication that they didn't think that this product was going to explode. This chat GPT that we're talking about, this artificial intelligence, we're talking about it in beta form right now, Tim. So there's no way that they thought that ChatGPT was the right name for this. Okay, anybody that doesn't know, take us through what exactly it is. Yeah, exactly. So what we're seeing right now is a renaissance in the way that people are using artificial intelligence. ChatGPT is released by a company called OpenAI. And what they've basically done is they've made it a lot easier for you and I to start to write, create code, create prompts, and we can do things in seconds now that it used to take hours to do and lots of people to do. The trick here, though, is ChatGPT has been released in beta form. So it's only a tool and it's not a resource. And that's what's got people very scared. It's shown the potential for artificial intelligence. But unfortunately, people don't really understand that we're not even at ChatGPT4, which is the real version of what OpenAI is trying to do. So we're at just the tip of the imagination here. So it's going into, you type a topic in, whatever, whatever, whatever it is, and it goes into the internet and comes up with the topic or whatever answers the question, whatever you asked. So in its current form, Tim, it doesn't go into the internet. It's being fed multiple layers of language through the company OpenAI, which is why I say it's a tool, not a resource. However, if you post a link in it, it can pull from the internet. So if you want to do a 500 word blog about the ongoing history between the Leafs and the Bruins, that's all you have to type in and it will pull the information. But that is information from OpenAI. All the other big tech companies right now are building similar products. Microsoft has invested 10 billion in OpenAI. Google has Lambda that they're working on right now. IBM has a product. So we're really not just talking about ChatGPT here. We're talking about the idea that the whole process here is starting to expedite in an amazing fashion. Okay, is it amazing? Because where is this going? I know like newsrooms, like our newsroom, what about uh, schools? There has to be super, super concerns about this. Yes, when speaking to educators, what I've started to understand is that they're not ready yet for the tsunami of information and uh, of course plagiarism potential that ends up happening with something like ChatGPT. But right now what we're seeing, Tim, is people building ecosystems to fight the plagiarism while we're also trying to get education systems to catch up. Unfortunately, we've seen in the past that the educator is usually the last to adapt to digital tools. So hopefully this is a little bit of an eye opener right now that we have to adapt quicker because you're right, newsrooms have one problem, educators have another. The problem with newsrooms is many people still go to Google for search. And if the wrong information is being fed on the internet via these bots writing this material, well, that's a whole different scenario. Well, it goes into the whole Wikipedia thing. We all use Wikipedia, but does, a lot of the time Wikipedia might not be accurate because it's us filling the information in there. Yes, and to that point, let's not forget that we, it's our data that's building this AI. So in many cases, the resource that I was talking about versus the tool, it's information that over the past 20 years, it's us, you know, the stuff that we've been tracked about, the stuff that we've been emailing, et cetera. We are building the artificial intelligence tools for tomorrow. And an understanding that ChatGPT is really not about just this one program. It's more about just the insight, where we're going. And I think that we have to pay close attention about this disruption right now. Okay, is it, is it a bad thing, lastly? I mean, we have to work with it, not against it. I think we are getting to a point where, look, you know, back in the day when we wrote an essay, we were marked on spelling. Now spelling isn't a part of that essay mark. I think going forward, the way that we are being tested, the way that we are creating things and the way that we are educating people, all needs a little bit of a rethink. Not immediately, but at least looking towards it in the future. I'm just gonna go chat GP, just easier. Can I go that? Can I just do that? Chat GP? I'm by gonna this, lose the T. By, by this time next month, we're going to be talking about another program anyway. Awesome. So do okay. what you like.